Hi, guys. <laughs> Sherm keeps making fun of me every time I try to make a video. I hear his little screechy mouth. It always makes me laugh, and I can't call Stop it! <laughs> See how he is? He always does this to me. When I try to take my medicine or anything to get me to choke it up. Stop it! I'm trying to read my friend's story. Go to the bathroom. All right. <laughs> this story from the good old days is called Shut Up. Papa Sid, Mamma Ethel, and Granny. <clears throat> they provided the perfect balance of discipline and fun by Lexi Sullivan. He's going around making faces at me. Walking stupidly. Stop it! I was blessed to have a wonderful grandparents on both sides of my family. Papa Sid and Mama Ethel, my dad's parents, lavished my sister and me with love. Papa in his quiet way with a smile and a twinkle in his eye and Mama in her open emotional way, often gathering us in her strong arms, hugging us to her ample bosom and planting kisses all over us. We never doubted their love and our place of importance in their lives. Perhaps it was because my dad was practically an only child. I could say something about that, but I'm not going to. Sherm's an only child, and he doesn't get no attention. I had to say it, because he's always saying that, so. Maybe it was because their own little girl had died when she was only five days old and my dad was five, but Papa and Mama took on their role as grandparents with extraordinary zeal. They seemed to have one unspoken rule, if the girls want to do something and it's safe and possible, let's do it. If we wanted to go swimming in the middle of a hot summer afternoon, Mama would walk with us to Papa's nearby car repair shop and say, Sydney, these girls want to go swimming. He would close the shop and take us. Spending the night with them often meant Papa's special chocolate gravy for breakfast, served over butter over Mama's large fluffy biscuits. Other times it might be buttered toast smeared with Mama's homemade strawberry jam. They tried to make everything special for us. So sweet. Mama sometimes took us to the cedar glade behind their house for an afternoon picnic, spreading ourselves with our goodies over the large flat limestone rocks. We soaked in the warm spring sun and watched the wispy clouds scurry across the sky. On rainy days, she would gather us into her lap in the big closed-in rocking chair on the back porch and tell us stories set in the wilderness of the wild Arkansas Ozarks, stories of panthers, their blood-curdling screams, and narrow escapes from their clutches. Papa, too, liked to share such stories with us. He liked to sit in the darkness of the front porch before bedtime. We would sit quietly with him for a while, listening to the night songs of the crickets, the frogs in the pond below the house, and whippoorwills calling to each other in the lane. I remember all that stuff and all that stuff when I lived uh, in the country there when I was a kid. But before long, we would ask for a story. Then we would get cold chills as Papa told true stories of men in our community who had encountered big cats, some even stalked by them while out coon hunting or rounding up cattle. Mama read Bible stories to us straight from the big family Bible while our eyes followed her finger under the words, I can still see her wetting her finger to hear the soft rattle of the thin paper and she sep as she separated the pages. We love the stories of Daniel in the lion's den and the handwriting on the wall. Even the characters' exotic names held charm for us as we let them roll off our tongues. Since he was a mechanic, Papa often had to make the 30-mile trip to Batesville 
the nearest town of any size to buy car parts. My sister and I look forward to these trips because they could always count on getting an ice cream cone on the way home. The one particular trip Mamaw took us to Sterling's, the five and dime store, and let us choose the dress and shoes we wanted. I chose a frilly, shoddy made dress and bright green shoes. I wore them to church the following Sunday, and I'm sure my mother was embarrassed. She was a meticulous seamstress and made all of our clothes. Her taste in fashion was modest, as well as the green shoes must have been particularly offensive. But Mamma Ethel simply wanted us to have what made us happy. Granny, my mother's mother, was loving, but cut from a different emotional material. She was quite an orderly and expected us to behave. We liked to go to Granny's and spend time with her, but we knew she wouldn't give us just anything we wanted. She knew it wasn't good for us, and we knew she would not allow any kind of misbehavior or naughtiness. We were blessed to have her firm hand. She provided the balance we needed without her discipline. We might have been real stinkers. Granny was a practical and unselfish woman. She shaved her saved she saved her money to buy fabric so mom could make our clothes. She and grandpa paid us ten cents a quart to pick their strawberries. The going rate was a nickel a quart. So we would have spending money. In the fall, Granny took us into the woods below their house to gather walnuts. We sold them and made more spending money. She sat with us at night after supper on the screened-in back porch, listening to the night sounds and telling us stories of her childhood and early years as a mother of four. She lovingly washed and dried our dirty feet in cool water before we went to bed. It was a treat for us, and it saved her sheets. She hugged and kissed us when we came, and hugged and kissed us when we left. We never doubted her love. I like to remember Granny as she sat in church wearing a dark, belted skirt waist dress on her own making, tailored exquisitely, a brooch on the lapel. Her hair dark, even into her 70s, was short and wavy from her weekly trip to Oshie's beauty shop. Her makeup was face powder and deep red lipstick, simple and attractive, and she smelled wonderfully of rose talcum powder. When I sat with her, she might let me look into, but not explore her purse, a black leather bag with a snap clasp and double handle. How neat everything was. A flowered hanky neatly folded was at one end. Her small leather coin purse that snapped open and shut, stood at the other. A comb lay along the bottom. All was neat and in perfect order, just like Granny. I had no idea what a wonderful childhood I had until it was over. I was blessed with Christian parents who loved me and loved each other, but my grandparents put the icing on the cake of my young life, and my memories of them are priceless. I thought that was a cute story, a nice story of the good old days. She had some really good grandparents, didn't they? I wish everybody's grandparents would be, could have been so nice. My grandparents were great. I love my grandparents, still do. They've all since passed away, but I had my granny and papa on my mom's side. They were so, so good to us. They loved us kids so much. They were wonderful. I couldn't have asked for a better granny and papa. I hope you guys enjoyed the story of Papa Sid, Mama Ethel, and Granny. And I hope you guys have a great night. And sorry for Sherm's rude interruptions. <laughs> Bye, guys.